I find myself sometimes saying to my students, in this day and age, you know, and it's like, are we really living in this day and age? The moment that we're living through is not the first time that the U.S. has tried to confront the history of blackface. So many things that were settled, or we thought were settled, keep popping up again. Blackface never seems to go away. Blackface is uh, the putting on of makeup, uh, dark makeup, to make an individual either look darker than they are, or as they are a white individual, to look black. Mistral shows and blackface performance as a theatrical tradition went on for a very long time. In theaters in the United States, it began in the 1820s, it probably been alive in the streets and in various kinds of informal performances uh, well before then. Blackface minstrelsy becomes a form of social control in tandem with legislation like the Dred Scott decision and in tandem with extra legal means of social control such as racially based terrorism in the form of lynching. Blackface and black oppression go hand in hand. It dies out in the early decades of the 20th century, but at that point it migrates to Hollywood and becomes a performance convention in Hollywood films. Mammy. Mammy. Unless you're going back to your mammy and your pappy and the 12 twins. Oh, no. oh. Rico, what do you do? Can't you see it's Judy? No. Mr. Judy. <laughs> The most controversial, inflammatory blackface performance, um, which is not minstrelsy, but is um, what happens in A Birth of a Nation, which comes out in 1915. And um, it presents every negative stereotype of black people that you can come up with. When Birth of a Nation was uh, released, the NAACP uh, protested the images in the film and the racist propaganda of the film, and that certainly contributed to the sense of blackface being corrupt and violent and revolting. Andy, please let me loan, will you? Well, Amos, remember that that is a business telephone. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. You all right? I'm only dressed this way because I was in a menstrual show. A what? A menstrual show. A menstrual show. Menstrual. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best. Some people will do anything to get into Harvard. It's gonna be great. These are the 80s, man. It's the Cosby decade. <laughs> I sing good? Don't you realize you were making fun of black people? But why? We were just imitating Al Jolson. He was a black singer. He wasn't black. But what, but what is racist? Because, because so truly, you do get in trouble if you are a white person who puts on yes, black face yes. for Halloween or a black person who puts on white face yes. for Halloween. Like, I, back, okay, back when I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as bars. like a character. Yeah, if somebody... No, it wasn't okay. It is not okay to produce forms that are tied to violence, right? I mean, blackface and lynching go hand in hand. So, no, it's not okay. I imagine that in certain circles, it is okay, but those are white supremacist circles. As soon as blackface was, was put on by any white performer in the United States, there were African-American critics of the practice all the way back into the 1830s and 1840s. Frederick Douglass is on record, for example, saying that these are the lowest scum of white humanity who are trading on our image and trying to steal it for their own purposes. So forget about the 1980s. I mean, we're talking about the 1840s and ever since in which African-American critics and white critics too have been um, slamming blackface as a form. Most of the, I think, African-American population um, understands it as uh, derision, ridicule, 
social control of black people. I would have thought that most of mainstream America understood it as that as well. Whiteness assumes the privilege of being, being ignorant about a lot of things and that one of the privileges of being white is to not know, is to not have to know that this is an offensive practice. I do think that there are degrees, right? Um, and I do think that intention does matter. Where it gets tricky is that the boundaries are not solid or fixed and they are not clear. It's okay in this context, but it's not okay in that context. It's okay for this person, but it's not okay for that person, right? And while I think those distinctions are valid, because they are unfixed and because they are unclear, I personally think we just need to stay away from it. The Confederate flag is a, is a good analog for blackface masking. I mean, there was a time in the 1970s, for example, when you had the Confederate flag tossed around by certain Southern rock bands or in Dukes of Hazard, you know, attempts to, to aw shucks it and just make it, you know, it's just like a, we don't mean that. It's just this thing. It's just this kind of, you know, uh, harmless thing. In fact, it's not. It carries, it carries a long history behind it of hatred, just like the blackface mask. It's never going to be completely dislodged from that history that it, it came out of in the first place. You can assume that all masks are fair game and it's all harmless fun and everybody should have the right to tease and mimic anyone else, but when it comes to blackface or yellowface or redface or brownface or any other kind of uh, racial mimicry that is by definition, because of the history of this country, rooted in racial inequality and that's just part of what the mask is and says. It's where it comes from and it's actually what it expresses. Because of, of all this, this gray area, if you will, my personal opinion, right? And this is just one little, one little professor, right? Um, my personal opinion is just don't. I view it in the same way that I view the N-word, right? That we cannot extricate it cleanly from its history of violence and oppression. Therefore, just don't.